Recently, I started production on a pair of uh, pants or shorts to go with my gambeson jacket. Uh, I needed these to protect myself just as the medieval warrior would have done uh, from blunt force trauma and percussion injury. And in HEMA, just like it would have been on the medieval battlefield, things can get carried away, people can get a bit silly, or even, you know, just have a simple accident and hit someone a bit harder than they intended to do so. And so, having a good quality pair of uh, shows and a gamazon jacket is essential. I, uh, I did quite a bit of research into this. I uh, contacted the museum near Visby uh, in Scandinavia and was con uh, looking at um, what kind of um, thicknesses and materials gambesons would have been made from in that period. And some of it was actually quite surprising. Obviously, ideally, many warriors would have used things like horsehair or sheep's wool uh, to goat's wool, that kind of thing. Uh, to make a, a padded garment, but um, in fact, it seems to be the case that some of these were much thinner than you might imagine, and also some of these were um, also just made from wool off a loom. So I guess in many cases where warriors were uh, needing to put together gear and they didn't have as much time to do so, uh, and, and you can see many examples of this throughout history, um, then they would need to use what they had simply had available and if they didn't have uh, you know horse hair or something like that then they would simply use what they, you know, they could find whether that's scrap linen or whatever it might be um, and so today what I'm going to do is uh, put together a pair of padded shoes already so much like the the ordinary pair of shoes that I made just recently we're going to need a whole bunch of measurements to get this right you need um, uh, as, as a warrior, you need to be able to move and twist and bend and all that kind of thing and fight away without uh, any kind of restrictions in your joints. So you need the length uh, of your leg from the hip to your ankle. You need the circumference of your upper and lower thigh and also of your ankle. You need to know the height of your lower leg and also of your upper leg. Well, you know, I realise there's a fair bit of information right there. Uh, then you need to translate that into a pattern. Now, um, don't be like overly concerned and don't sort of set your expectations too high uh, because I found that even with all of those measurements and allowing seam allowance and all that kind of stuff, I, I still came up short um, simply because of the padding and that kind of thing. And I'm obviously wearing mine under chainmail, which again provides a lot of sort of extra restrictions uh, that I didn't necessarily take into account. Uh, and that's probably simply a lack of experience. All right, so uh, let's take a look. All factors included, this is pretty much what we're looking like. So we're gonna have some inbuilt belt loops the padded shows and the chainmail leggings are going to come, basically be hanging off a leather belt. Um, I'm using a relatively thick, I suppose, about two and a half mil thick piece of wool. And I've got a total of three layers that you should be able to see there. One is essentially full size or, or pretty close to full size. I've then got two smaller sections which are really designed to cover the, um, the outer aspect of my quads, which are probably the most likely areas to cop um, hits during any kind of uh, HEMA activities. All right, now what I'm gonna do is basically place a second piece of fabric across and sandwich that all together. Uh, but before I do that, I just need to um, get a bit of the stitching done on the outer fabric so everything's going to work nicely. The fabric that I'm using is not particularly historically accurate at all. Um, I'm using a ripped top canvas. I get it, I understand, this is not historically accurate. They would have used linen back in the day, I understand that. Um, but I need something that's going to work for me, uh, for, for my applications, and I need to do things just a little bit differently. Uh, and, and this is what was available. As, as it happens, the, um, the shop really didn't have very much in terms of a, a white or a beige linen available at the time when I was purchasing this fabric. So, ripstop canvas it was.
the, all the wool is now loaded inside the, uh, the sandwich of the ripstop canvas. Now uh, you can see the two belt loops, that's fine. And uh, now what I just need to do is sew the, uh, where the blue chalk lines are. I realise a sewing machine is again not historically accurate. I get it, I understand. I'm a single parent of three children. My time is uh, a bit of a commodity sometimes. And so I've got to just work with what I've got. So the sewing's now pretty much completed, the seams are all done and uh, all the quilting's done. I've come out pretty happy with this. It's a very simple garment, it's a very functional garment. It's not really going to, you know, it doesn't matter whether it looks fancy or not. Um, in, in the later aspects of the medieval period, uh, this gambesans and, and, and acutens and all those kind of garments, which are all very similar, uh, started to have a lot more colour to them and a lot more detail. In fact, some of them started to be worn over armour. So you actually had like a second gambeson. You had like the base layer one, and then you also had um, a heraldric one, which kind of replaced a surcoat uh, and was worn on top of mail. And these seem to have been incredibly effective. The gambeson was in fact like the Kevlar of its day, um, extraordinarily con uh, effective because it created that air gap between the different layers and therefore um, projectile weapons such as arrows and spears um, and, and bladed weapons such as swords and so on I really didn't have um, uh, as, as much power over the game. All right. Okay, so let's try it out. Alrighty, I'm fairly happy with that. Basically very happy, um, still have all the functionality in the movement. Let's try them on with chainmail. Basically really happy, it's a little difficult to get yourself dressed without a squire when you're wearing pants that are suddenly 10 kilos heavy. There we go, a little bit uh, awkward, I've never worn um, these in quite this way before, but there we go. Alright, but otherwise really happy with the project. Uh, it's very simple, very economical, um, and it's a very you know easy thing to do for yourself. If you really want to get into reenactment or HEMA, that kind of thing, it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing to do. The male's probably dragging down a bit. Um, I need to figure out how to get that to stay in place better. But otherwise, um, I'm very basically happy with this. Um, and the pattern, yeah, it's, this is the first time that I've worn this particular set of mail shows. Um, he's only arrived in the post the other day. Uh, but basically it seems to work pretty well. I do have the movement there. Um, it does take a bit to get used to. It does take a bit to get used to, so um, I wouldn't recommend wearing these for the first time during some kind of like fight training or whatever, but there we go. That's up to you. Alrighty. 
Otherwise, um, really good project, very simple, very easy. Great thing to do if you've got a bit of spare time and a bit of spare cash. Save yourself a ton of money. Rightio guys, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.